Hey guys, I got a quick showdown battle for you here. I'm using a Honchkrow team I made uh, a couple weeks ago, I think, after the Ju May or June usage, uh, usage stats came out. Um, there was a lot of hype around Honchkrow and Quillfish, and you know, kind of wanted to use them to see, see how good they really were. And they really work together since Quillfish can get up a lot of spikes to help Honchkrow sweep. Um, so, yeah, here's the battle. I lead off with Rhyperior, trying to get rocks up as early as possible. Uh, he leads with his Rotom Heat. I want to scout for the HP Grass, because um, I think most of them carry the HP Grass, but some of them carry the HP Ice, so... I switch into my Chandelier because uh, he's not going to t the Rhyperior, so I can take anything else and um, even a trick if he wants to go for expecting my Snorlax switching, because I am Scarfed, he's likely... Scarfed or even a Specs wouldn't, wouldn't be too bad on um, Chandler. So uh, I expect him to go into Snorlax, that's why I double into Virizion. Uh, even if he wasn't short, oh, he just didn't went for like a T Bolt or something, it wouldn't have, wouldn't have done that much. So I just get up I just get up an SD here, thinking that if this Gophagus is, uh, is Trick Room, then I could do it KO with Leaf Blade, but unfortunately it isn't as able to burn my Lumberry. Uh, which is which is bad because I need this Virzion to to wear that down that Suiku. But um, just expecting another Will-O-Wisp because he, he kind of needs to go for it. I'm I'm gonna go into my Chandler. Now since I've been pre uh, predicting him since turn one, uh, I'm expecting him to maybe like over predict. Uh, expect the Virzion to come back in, so I, I just go off, go get a Fire Blast off, uh, which is a, a really bad play since his Snorlax comes in and now. I'm think I'm hoping that he doesn't have the pursuit and it's just gonna go maybe like for a crunch or EQ. Uh, knowing he's not gonna go for a body slam, obviously. I go into Virzion and he just uh, whirlwinds me out showing he's the specially defensive um pair of set. Uh, I could have calced it from the fire blast damage, but I wasn't really feeling that tryhard. So he whirlwinds me onto right here, which is perfect since he, he can't touch me and I can get up rocks. Um I guess he knows that, and uh, he just brings his Golurk in. Uh, Golurk can take a hit from Rhyperior anyway, so... He's just gonna get up his rocks, and knowing that I'm gonna go for the EQ. Uh, just get a nice chunk of damage off on this. It's it's not really stopping me too much, but it, it's a damn bulky Pokemon, so... Any damage on it is, is really nice. Uh, so now he's gonna switch into a Sukun as I switch out into my... Um, my Quillfish, hopefully, just to take like a, a dynamic punch or something. He could have gone for the EQ, which could have done a lot, but I think that this was still probably the best move I could have made. Um, <clears throat> now, I'm really scared of the Suicune being Croakmoon, so I'm gonna try to get a T Wave slowed down a little bit until I'm able to bring in Virzion. But he, he does the roar, which, um, which makes sense a lot. He's got spike stacking, uh, a sturdy spin blocker. So it makes sense he'd have um, the shuffling set. Uh, rolls me out into my Snorlax, and uh, I'm thinking he might roar again, but I really don't want to get burned, so I just go back into my Quillfish. Um, and it's getting worn down quite a bit, and there's the threat of being burned, but I don't really need this for too much on his team. And um, I don't know, even if I'm burned, it doesn't matter too much because. Fish already can't hit for crap, and I'm also running Hydro Pump over Waterfall because it's uh, it does, I think, just slightly more damage. Um, I think mostly I run Scald on my Cool Fishes now. It's uh, using Special Attack over Attack is also really helpful since you can you can drop your attack IVs and uh, not take so much from confusion and, and foul play, so that's why I do that. Um, I don't know, Quillfish is not going to be doing that much damage anyways. So, he knows I'm just going to keep switching to my Quillfish and maybe get off like a Pain Split or Destiny Bond later. I, I go for the Pain Split now. I think he might just try to finish me off, but he goes on to his Rosary to, to get off his own spikes. I could have switched down to Chandelier here to threaten him out, but I figure that my goal here is to get Hotchko to sweep. and. His spikes don't impede me from doing that, but me getting at my own spikes would help me a lot. So, uh, he just, we trade some spikes, um, 
he gets off a Giga Drain, and I guess thinking I'm gonna be scared out this turn, he just gets another another Leo Spikes, or or maybe he just thinks that Cool Fish isn't really too much of a threat to him because it, it really isn't. So I just paint split off here, um, get just a little bit of damage off of this Roserade. And um, he, he gets up all his hazards and I get up all my hazards. Neither of us have spinners, so like uh, most of our pokes are going to be taking crazy damage. Like see here, my chandelier takes 50% as he gets a layer of toxic spikes, which I'm really surprised to see since you don't usually see Pokemon getting up um, tox uh, two different kinds of hazards, but um, I'm expecting the Snorlax to come in, um, so I just I triggered a, a Choice Scar. Um, and I guess it wouldn't, wouldn't have even been that bad if it got off on the Roserade, but... Um, anyways, he, he locks himself in the Whirlwind, Whirlwinds me out into my Quillfish, which is perfect, because I can get rid of those Toxic Spikes. And then he Whirlwinds me onto Rhyperior, which is like the, the second worst thing he could have Whirlwind me onto. So, I make a really bad play here. I I um, I sack my Chandelier in order to get a safe switch into my Honchkrow, thinking that this would be a good time to start my sweep. Um, if I was playing well, I really would have weakened uh, his Pokemon a lot more because I'm going to be taking a lot of recoil from Brave Bird and just from Life Orb in general. So I make another bad play, going for Brave Bird on the Golurk when I should have gone for Pursuit. I was expecting the Suicune switch in, but um, you know, like a plus one play, Brave Bird is going to take that out no matter what. Uh, now he brings in his Rotom. Um, I know the trick is a real possibility, but I thought that going for Sector Punch was much safer in case he was Scarfed and went for a Volt Switch. I would still be able to get off some damage. But um, but anyways, he, he does he does trick me, and then next turn I actually outspeed and Brave for him, which doesn't quite take him out, allowing him to trick uh, my Honchkrow's Life Orb onto my Snorlax. Um, I guess he was thinking that. Uh, he, did, he didn't really have much to hit me with, and that wearing it down with Life Orb would be a good option, but I don't know, I thought that was a good play when I saw it too, but as you can see here, Snorlax is really tearing a hole through his team. And he, he tries the rest of it, Rosary trying to Life Orb stall me, but it, it's not going to work, as this, <clears throat> as this Snorlax almost one hit KOs. So his last Pokemon is the Cafagrius, which will get outsped and destroyed with Crunch. And that's the game. Um, big sweep, not with my Honchkrow, but with a Life Orb Snorlax.